Now, the Gauteng Household Travel Survey shows we're spending proportionally more and more of our salaries just to move around. Almost six in ten Gauteng families spend over 10% of their budget on transport, which is an increase on previous years. Now, that 10% is the ideal. Many families spend much more than 10% of their salaries on transport. Over 30,000 residents of Joburg, Tswane, Ekoroleni, as well as the districts of Sedibeng and West Rand participated in the survey. Travel time has also increased. And to tell us what this means, I'm joined now by Dr. Mateta Mokonyama, manager of the CSIR's Transport Systems and Operations Division. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you so much for your time. So 30,000 people were surveyed. We always have known for a long time that we spend too much on transport. But why is it going up? Uh, good, good evening, Sally. Um, it is going up because uh, part of the reason it's going up is because we more and more dependent on low-capacity public transport modes like minibus taxis, and more and more we're depending, dependent on uh, private cars. Uh, so essentially the cost per trip, the, per, the cost per kilometer uh, is, is on the increase. But also the way we plan our cities, the way we locate our, um, uh, our low income settlements, uh, you know, housing programs, uh, it, it is far away from you know, high capacity you know, public transport services. Mm. That is a, a real legacy of apartheid and a, a sad reality that has remained constant, of course, uh, over the years. I'm also interested to know why travel time is increasing. Is it because our public transport systems are failing us? That, that's, a, that's an interesting one. I mean, if you recall, in Gauteng, we have what is called you know, the, the Gauteng Freeway Improvement Project, you know, the, the, the freeways, which have increased the capacity of the uh, of the of, of the network, especially national roads, but then you know it is counterintuitive that why is it that you increase the capacity of the freeways and so forth, yet the the, the, the travel times continue to increase to that extent, and what this points out to is that you know the a lot of travel actually takes place on municipal roads, it takes place on local roads, you know provincial roads, which have not had much change over the years. So a lot of the bottlenecks are actually inside the municipalities, and that is why you're seeing more and more you know, longer travel times. But then also, again, we're dependent on low capacity modes. Higher capacity modes haven't really been extended to that extent. Uh, like your, your trains, uh, they have not extended their footprint. And in fact, they have reduced in terms of capacity buses as well. So uh, you'd expect then that th there's a lot of demand for a limited you know, network space. Mm. And also, as we see our infrastructure falling apart at times or, you know, cables being stolen and our railways are just not op operating as they should, I'm sure that adds to the problem. How much is congestion increasing on our roads? Well, uh, we measured that because we've, we've done this for the past, you know, uh, where we've had three measurements since 2002. We have almost doubled in terms of travel time uh, from 2002 to 2019-20, right? That, 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 that is quite a lot. But what is interesting is that it is the public transport users who are more affected. So often we think that, you know, congestion, road congestion, it is the rich person's problem, but it's actually affecting the poor the most. That is why I think when you look at the economic recovery plan from, from the president, you, you begin to see that there's a lot of emphasis on you know, integrated public transport networks to unlock you know, public transport you know, speeds uh, to make sure that improved, uh, the, the service quality improves, um, uh, therefore that the, the, the cost to the economy is essentially reduced because labor, uh, which is dependent uh, quite a lot on public transport, is a huge component, it's a cost component across all of the transactions, economic transactions. You know, it's such an important uh, research document, and I understand that you, as CSR, conducted this research on behalf of the Gauteng Department of Roads and Transport. They, I presume, are going to take all this information, which is really how consumers feel about transport in the province of Gauteng. What next? What happens next? Well, the, the, the MEC for Roads and Transport has committed to saying 
This is the voice of households in the province, and it needs to be translated into action. So I think we know what needs to be done. We just need to be able to do it. Um, we need to increase, improve capacity of project management in the municipalities, contract management in the municipalities, so that what we say we're going to do, we indeed do it. It was quite interesting just reading through uh, uh, some of the points that uh, people are less happy with taxis than they are with buses and trains. And the reason they're not happy with taxis is mainly the safety worry, as from what I'm reading. Uh, buses and trains, their main concern um, is accessibility, which of course relates to what you were mentioning around how uh, they're just not enough services. Do you think that uh, the concern raised by commuters about taxis um, is going to speed uh, the push to actually subsidize taxis more um, and regulate taxis more? Do you think that will be something that will really help in the long term to make the consumer experience a better one? You know, um, the word subsidy, uh, in fact, we need to question it, uh, you know, going forward. You know, when you look at independent power producers, right? Uh, we say we want to buy uh, electricity from independent power producers uh, so that we have energy security. We, we, we actually, in public transport, we need to say we need to buy. We need to buy from you know, these service providers, taxis being uh, one of the service providers, because they are indeed providing a service. And then say this is the quality, this is, these are the targets that we want to buy from you. It's not just pushing money into the taxi industry, bus industry, is to specify exactly what we want and then buy it, get into contracts with them. And then what technology they use is about the industry innovating you know, going forward. Mm, that's a very interesting perspective, and thank you very much for sharing the results of the Gauteng Transport Survey. That was Dr. Mal